Hi, Tenfold. My name is Jennifer, and I would like you to please help me with this question. Thank you very much. Tells us to consider the following sequence. 2, 2, negative 3, 6, negative 8, and 18. Okay, so before we get into any of the questions, guys, remember, with your sequences, you need to be focusing on where it starts and what it does. Those are two very important things about your sequence because more often than not, where it starts, that A term is in your, it's in your general formula. You will always have an A term in your general formula. Also, what it does defines what the formula does. If it has a common first difference, linear pattern. Common second difference, quadratic pattern. Common ratio, geometric. So you need to remember what a sequence does is very important when finding the general term. Okay, so if we look at this sequence, Finding the first difference is not going to help us because it's not going to be constant. I'm guaranteeing you that. Second difference is also not going to be constant because we have an alternating sign. Finding a general ratio is also not going to happen because 2 divided by 2 is 1, 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 8 divided it, you're not going to get a constant ratio. Okay, so what I'm going to advise is if you get a sequence that looks like this, where you can't find a pattern between consecutive terms, you know, terms that follow one after another. Try and look at the alternating terms. See if there's a pattern between term one and three, two and four. Go and look and see if they're trying to trick you by combining two patterns. I'll show you what I mean here. If we look at the even numbered terms, okay, so or let's start with the odd number. Term one, term three, term five, etc. The odd pattern is going to give us 2, negative 3, negative 8. Is there a pattern between these terms? There is absolutely a pattern. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. So common first difference, which means it's a linear pattern. How do we find the general form of a linear pattern? Well, remember. The coefficient of n is always that common first difference. So we're going to have minus 5n. How do we get from minus 5 to 2? We add 7. Okay, so remember the odd numbered terms, the terms in odd positions, so position 1, position 3, position 5, form a linear pattern. Now if we look at the terms in even positions, we're going to get... 2 as well, 6 and 18. Remember, we're looking here. Term 2, term 4, term 6. And is there a pattern between these terms? There absolutely is a pattern. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. 6 multiplied by 3 is 18, which means we have a constant ratio. Where does a ratio come into play? In a geometric. Okay, so how do we find the general term of a geometric sequence? It's always, remember, a times r to the n minus 1. So a is our first term. 2 times r, which is the ratio, 3, to the power of n minus 1. And so now we've been able to say that all of the terms in even positions or odd positions first Term 1, term 3, term 5, afterwards will be term 7, are defined by this linear pattern over here. These are the odds. Okay? All of the terms in even positions, so the term at position 2, position 4, position 6, afterwards will be position 8. They are all defined by this geometric sequence here, the even numbered terms. Okay? So, how do we find the next two terms of the sequence? Well, we know that it's going to be term 7 and term 8. So, term 7 follows the odd patterns. Okay, so after this one, how do we get to term 7? We subtract 5 from minus 8. So, negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. Now, term 8, we jump to the even sequence. 18 multiplied by 3, because we multiply by 3 each time, is 54. 
Okay, so this sequence here is going to carry on. Negative 13, 54. Okay, so simple first question, because it didn't ask you to deal with a general rule, but now it's going to get tricky, because we get asked to calculate term 24 and term 25. Now, I'm going to rewrite our sequences out. We have 2, negative 3, negative 8 for the odd sequence, 2, negative 3, negative 8. And for the even, we had 2, 6, 18. Now, remember, if we're looking for term 24 and 25, what we could do is go and take this sequence and expand it all the way to 24 and 25, but that is going to take a very long time because we only have until term 8, so that's going to take a while for us to get there. So if you feel comfortable, you can do that. But what I want to try and teach you is how to associate this to its individual patterns. So I hope you guys agree with me that I'm going to write the general pattern or the overall pattern in white, okay? So this would be term one in the overall pattern, term two in the overall pattern, three, four, five, six, okay? But in their individual patterns, if we're looking at just the odd, this is term one, term two, term three. Let me write it like this rather. So remember, overall pattern is given by the white numbers. Individual is given by the red numbers. So in its individual sequence, <coughs> let's look at the even sequence. This is term one in the individual even sequence. Term two, term three. So if I went and substituted 24 into our even numbers, I'm going to get the wrong answer because even though term 24 might happen in the sequence, it is not going to correspond with term 24 in the overall sequence. I hope that makes sense. So how do we go from our individual term to the term in the overall sequence? Well, if we're looking at the even numbers, it's easy. You just multiply by two, okay? But in the odd numbers, if we look here, if we multiply by 2, but then subtract 1, we're going to get to the general term, okay? So term 2 in the individual odd sequence is term 3 in the overall sequence. So how do we get to term 24? Well, obviously term 24 is going to be even positioned. So 24, if we want to go backwards, because we're going to have term 24 somewhere along here. To get to its term in the even sequence, we need to divide by 2. So term 24 is term 12 in the even sequence. I hope that makes sense, given here. To go backwards, this is supposed to be 24 over here, 24. To go backwards in the odd, we first have to subtract 1, and then divide by 2. So term 25 minus 1 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. So that means that term 25 is term 12 in the odd sequence, and that is what we substitute into our formula. So remember, the even, and the odd will be there, was given by, what did we find? Even was our geometric. 2 times 3 to the power of n minus 1. And the odd was negative 5n minus 7. So, to find term 24, 12 into the even gives us 2 times 3 to the power of 12 minus 1. And our term 25 was term 12 in the odd sequence, okay? So we say minus 5 times 12 minus 7. And to add them together, you would just add these two over here. So term 24 plus term 25. I was a nonna and didn't get my calculator out, so let me do that quickly. Calculator. 
we say 2 times 3 to the power of 12 minus 1 plus negative 5 multiplied by 12 plus 7. And we're going to get 354,241. Let me double check that number. 354241. Okay, so I know that was a really, really complicated question, guys. And if you don't feel comfortable finding the different alternating general terms and working this way, by all means, expand your whole series. But just now they ask for term 100 plus term 101. If you want to expand your whole series to that term, by all means go for it, but try and relate what they've given you to a general term. Try and find the pattern. You don't automatically find a common difference, common ratio, common second difference between consecutive terms. Try and see if they're being tricky and sneaking alternating patterns in there, okay.